Welcome to Mysteries, Myths, and Legends. I'm Taylor. I'm Savannah. And welcome to the show. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Hello. We're back at it again. Uh (laughs) Mm -hmm. It feels like we haven't recorded in forever again, but actually, you guys will hear no difference. So, haha. I love when we do that to them. I know. (laughs) Yeah. We're we're like uh, time travelers or something. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Every time you hear from us, just know we're coming from the past. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I love that from us. Um, but guys, I'm not going to go too heavy into detail because I must save it for a future episode. But I ate at a very haunted restaurant over the weekend and I cannot wait to tell you guys more about it. But that's all I have for you because you have to wait to see. That's all you're going to tell us? Yeah, I sorry. need to know. Sorry. Sorry, unfortunately, can't because I wanted this to be in one episode, but it was really fun. And I have not been to a lot of haunted restaurants before. And because I don't know if there even are that many now that I'm thinking about it. But it was an experience. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. Indeed. But so as we're recording, Labor Day weekend was last weekend. So what did you do, Savannah? Um... I hung out with you the whole time. (laughs) (laughs) We didn't, we like, we just, we both like didn't have plans really. (laughs) Just decided, um, actually our plans were to hang out together. Yeah. Um, And we went to the, um, we went to my parents' pool and hung out. Yes, pool party. And we were pretending to be mermaids and hanging out. um, And yeah. I think that's pretty much we did um we did go to old salem yes we did oh my we did gosh that too and Guys. got these like really good candies yes i was just gonna say <laughs> i've been obsessed. munching on them candies if you are ever in old salem and winston salem go to the bakery and get some candy because their little old candies are i mean like they're unbelievably good <laughs> yeah like i wasn't really expecting much but they no. are they're like the best like hard candy I've ever they really had. are i went on a bachelorette trip this past weekend and i made everybody try them and they were all so obsessed and i was like i know it's insane mm-hmm. so good so absolutely good but don't forget to rate and review us on apple Podcasts and spotify please as always um but other than that i don't really have any other intro topics yeah i think that's pretty much it i mean we we're together the whole time and exactly you know, like nothing happened. <laughs> didn't really we just, do much we were just honestly. vibing <laughs> chilling yeah. and vibing yeah chilling and vibing okay so uh this week i have like a few i guess like it's one big story but it's like mini you know branches off of the same thing Ooh. so i'm going to talk about some superstitions oh very superstitions i love that song <laughs> exactly yeah <laughs> Uh, so these are going to be actually Southern superstitions oh, to be specific. Oh, baby. Go on to the mm-hmm. South. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so since you, you know, you grew up here in the South and I did not. So as we go along on some of these, I'm just going to ask, like, have you heard about them before? You know? Oh, yes. I'm excited. So the first one is about painting your porch ceiling Hmm. do you know something about this no and i can confirm well i mean i do have a porch and a ceiling and it is painted but it's not painted specially it's just okay what color oh it's just white okay Mm -hmm. well there is a superstition that you should paint your porch ceiling a specific color of blue what and it's it's called haint blue interesting and um in like southern states it's i think it's a lot more in south carolina and georgia uh they paint their ceilings uh this blue color and you know you said yours is white mine's also white so we are not really following this but (laughs) so i said hate blue do you know what a hate is absolutely not it sounds like you're trying to say like it ain't but, I don't but know. yeah, I don't know. Um, I I guess it kind of I don't know. 
let me just let me just tell you where it comes from. So it it means an angry spirit. Oh, okay. Like angry spirits that are stuck between worlds. Oh, okay. And it actually comes from um uh like years and years ago, um, when African Americans came to you know, were shipped across the ocean as, you know, in, to be enslaved, which mm -hmm. is awful. You know, their culture definitely mixed in with the South a lot. So this word comes from their culture a little bit. It oh. comes from the word haunt. Oh, okay. Because so, I was kind of going to say it does kind of sound like a really Southern person saying haunt. But I didn't want to okay, be wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, then that's it. That's exactly it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it also, this idea of the color blue comes from Gullah culture, oh, yeah. which is, um, African American culture, um, mm -hmm. or I guess it's just African culture that came to America, if that yeah. makes sense, uh, from the low country region of South Carolina and Georgia. Yes. I remember the, um, boo hag story that I did was also Gullah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't remember what episode that was, but it was I early. I remember that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this blue color, there is a reason why they, why they want it to be blue. Mm -hmm. Um, it mimics the color of the sky, oh, uh, tricking yeah. ghosts into passing through, or it mimics the appearance of water, which ghosts can't cross. Yeah. So it basically just like keeps them away from the house. Okay. That actually does make sense. And that's also crazy. That's the second time recently we've heard that ghosts can't cross, cross water. Because I also said it in the Bob Mackey's music world. That they couldn't oh, yeah. cross the water. And I was like, why have I never heard of that? And now you're saying it again. So maybe it's a fact. I, yeah, honestly. Interesting. Hmm. But it does make sense to trick them into thinking it's water in the sky. I can see how it could look like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like water. I think the main one is that um, they're tricking it into tricking them into thinking it's water but another part of it is that they could think it's the sky so it's like two different things not like water in the sky but like you know uh okay so the gola they would point paint their porches uh doors window frames and shutters with this color and you know the gola culture sort of mixed with southern culture southern white culture and this idea spread across the South. Um, and in more recent years, and not as many people kind of believe in this superstition, but they'll still paint their porch this color to keep bugs away. Oh, what? So, Does that work? Well, it is used as sort of like a spider and wasp deterrent, but it's not... It's not necessarily, like, scientifically shown to work, but it could work due to the fact that, like, there's, um, if you use a certain paint that contains lye in it, it will keep the insects away. Okay. Well, <laughs> so, that does make sense. <laughs> yeah. So, like, it, it so kind yes of. yes and no. What, yeah, exactly. Yes and no. So, yeah, if you, um. If you go down to, like, South Carolina, Georgia, and see a bunch of blue porches, then that's why. <laughs> okay, so... Just keep the ghosts out. Over the past weekend, I was in Charleston, South Carolina, and I didn't think anything of it because every house in Charleston is a different color, but there are a lot of blue houses, specifically oh, yeah. the blue porches there. Mm -hmm. So now that makes more sense, but I just thought it was because everything is colorful there. Yeah. So, wow. Yeah, so that's interesting, the whole entire house. It's like they're really trying to take the, Well, not even the, the whole entire way. house. Like, I mean, the whole entire house is painted. Some of them were blue, but sometimes just the porches were blue. Or okay. it was like if yeah. the house was blue, the porch would be like a darker blue or a lighter mm -hmm. blue. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting. Yeah, see, the haint blue color, uh, it's like a really light blue. Oh, yeah. Like sky blue color. So Nice. So if you saw those, that's what it is. <clears throat> okay, so the next little superstition I have is that you should cover the mirrors and stop the clock when someone dies. Yeah, I've definitely heard of that one. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. Does your family practice it? No, no, no. 
they don't practice it, but I have heard of that one before. Mm-hmm. I know I don't know people who do it, but I've like heard of the legend in the South. Yeah. So this one, um, this one actually comes from. Uh, it has some Jewish origin in it, so we'll get to that. Uh, but the southern superstition of covering mirrors after someone passes, it is to, like, prevent the deceased spirit from becoming trapped in the glass. Because, um, like, when they see their reflection, they'll just, the spirit will get into the glass and, like, get trapped in the mirror. Um, and then there's also... Um, like people would cover the mirrors to hide the more the people mourning from seeing themselves during a time of grieving and it sort of like allows them to grieve fully um so it's sort of for the spirit and for the people their loved ones as well and this idea of like covering the mirrors for the mourners is um it sort of has like a, it has a Jewish origin, like I said, um, with sitting Shiva. Um, and I don't totally know, you know, everything about this, but Mm -hmm. in short, Shiva is a week long mourning period. Um, after the deceased is buried, then close family, like parents, siblings, their spouse or children, um, they all have like a time where they, Um, discuss their loss and they you know accept the comfort of others but they all have to remain at home for this whole week-long period and their mirrors inside their house are covered so um this is a you know something that the jewish people do um and it was adopted by some southern people for you know, similar reasons. <clears throat> no, that's really cool. I've heard of it for like the ghost spirits like being trapped, but I've never heard of it for the people mourning those who died. So that's cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so there, there is another um, like sort of reason why you would want to cover a mirror. So if a soul of the departed was meant for hell... <laughs> Um, it could seek out a mirror to try to escape yikes. that. That's a big yikes. Yeah. But I guess, you know, you don't really want, <laughs> you're like, even if you're going to hell, like, I'm sorry, you got to go. So they still cover the mirrors just to <laughs> get them to pass over. Yeah. Um, and if a soul did end up getting trapped in the mirror, first of all, that would be a bad thing. So, you know, even if it is your loved one, you wouldn't want your wouldn't want them trapped in the mirror because, you know, then they could haunt you and stuff. Exactly. So once they, if they did get trapped, um, you would release them by breaking the mirror. So, you know, simple. Yeah, easy enough. Yeah. Uh, and the stopping of the clocks. So this is another part of it. Um, it allows them to move into the afterlife without rushing them. And that's sort of another part of Shiva, I guess, Um, you know, to just, like, let everything take its time and, like, move on Mm -hmm. at its own pace. Um, I'm actually not sure if they stop their clocks, too, during that, but possibly. Um, It also, stopping the clocks, it also just marks the time of death, so that might be why it's a, you know a superstition like it people just got into the habit of doing it Mm -hmm. and then um you know now it's bad luck if you don't do it yeah that makes sense um and if the clock keeps there's also another thing that if the clock keeps going then you are inviting the deceased to stay in in your time and not pass on so like you shouldn't invite a spirit to stay you know so you're like I'm stopping the clocks because, you know, your time has stopped. You got to get out of here. You got to go. Yeah. So, so that's pretty much that superstition. Um, yeah, that, that one definitely seems kind of old timey to me as well, because it's like, I don't know of people who really do that other than, you know, people doing it for their religious religious reasons. But (laughs) definitely. 
Um, okay, this next one I think is going to creep you out a little bit. <laughs> Good, I love being creeped out. Okay, uh, it's never leave a rocking chair rocking. Mm-mm, immediate <laughs> no, immediate no. Yeah, so this one has um, origins with the Irish. Um, so they have a superstition that a rocking chair left rocking invites spirits to sit there. I would agree. And they say that the, they will, like, fill the home with dark forces and bad luck. And maybe even death. Mm. Yeah. I See, I love a good rocking chair, but they are so creepy. Even <laughs> just sitting by itself chilling. It's creepy. I have some on my porch. Yep. And they're creepy. <laughs> no, they're not, though. But like, It's such a overall. southern thing, too. Oh, very much so. They have a rocking chair. Yeah. Um... Also, one last thing about these is that if you see a rocking chair that's already rocking, it could already have a spirit in it. So so I shouldn't go sit in the chair if it's rocking? I might sit on a ghost? <laughs> yeah, and you might have bigger problems because, you know, you don't really want one sitting there. Yeah, maybe definitely. Maybe the thing is, like, I didn't really find what to do if there is one just rocking by itself but i'm guessing you just like stop it (laughs) right like i don't know wouldn't that make the ghost even more mad if he's chilling rocking in the chair and then you just stop him from rocking that'd make me mad maybe uh, (laughs) yeah well yeah i don't maybe it's not the best idea but i don't really know what what the solution there would be Um, i think the solution (laughs) is if you see a rocking chair rocking with nobody there just to run the other way go the other direction but what if it's your house like run the other way regardless oh okay all right (laughs) we're gonna go with that all right so the next superstition is um to have bottle trees outside your house do you know what a bottle tree is? I like, feel like you've seen them. Yeah, like wine glass. I mean, like wine bottles, like empty on a tree. Is that what you're talking about? Or like hanging from a tree? Well, maybe not wine bottles necessarily, but just like bottles. True. I've just seen wine bottles. But yeah, yeah. I've seen I've seen bottle trees for sure. Yeah. So this tradition also started with the Gullah culture. Uh, It began actually in the Congo in the 9th century. So this is a really, this is superstition that goes back pretty far. 9th century is crazy. It, it, yeah, it is. Like, what? And then it was brought over to America and it's, yeah, so, and people still use them, so. Yeah, to this day. Uh, So if you don't know what a bottle tree is, nowadays it's usually a metal piece that is put in the ground with some multicolored glass bottles on it. And traditionally, the bottles are cobalt blue. But, you know, Taylor, you just said just wine bottles. So, like, I mean, they can really be any color. Yeah, but, but they... normally, I think the ones that I've seen are, like, blue and green. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want them to be, like, colorful. Um, so, they're usually, like, if you don't have, like, just a metal uh, piece, you put it on, like, branches of dead trees or Mm -hmm. you know just something sticking in the ground um and by hanging these bottles evil spirits are drawn to the colors and are trapped inside oh a ghost in a bottle yeah so this will protect your home from spirits that's really interesting i kind of thought the bottle tree was just like a southern decoration that people liked i thought so too for the longest time and then i found this i was like what it's a superstition this whole time they got a ghost trap exactly that's literally what it is a ghost trap uh so so yeah you hang your bottles they go inside and they're trapped um so then you just have to leave the bottle there Yes, so the spirits actually will be destroyed when the sun hits the bottles. Oh, okay. Yeah, so also people say that you could also like put a cork on the bottle and send it down the river. But, you know, I'm just going to go with like the sun is probably going to take care of them for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to believe that too. Mm Mm-hmm. Um. And another, um, a a way to, like, find out if there's any ghosts in your bottles um, is that if one of the bottles hums when, like, the wind blows, then there's a spirit trapped inside. Oh, okay. That is actually interesting. 
Because you know how haunting it is when you hear like a deep blowing like of a bottle? <laughs> yes. Maybe. It's but, just trying to scream, to, it's screaming to get out. Yeah, it's like, help me. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much that one. <laughs> uh, I don't know, if you were a spirit, would you get trapped in those? I would like, probably definitely get trapped in that. Like, you would get tricked into going inside of a bottle? Yeah, <laughs> probably, because I love stained glass. I make can make stained glass, and so if I saw, like, a beautiful piece of glass, I might just fly right on into it. That's what, see, that's kind of what I'm thinking too. Like, mm-hmm. I might, I might as well. I don't yeah. know. I think the trap would work on me, unfortunately. Mm hmm. I mean, I guess we don't know. We're not ghosts yet, but. Yeah, true. We'll, we'll come back. <laughs> Updates in the future. Yeah. From, from beyond. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll find another person's podcast to like go and haunt and they can yeah. tell our story. <laughs> yeah. Or how about we be the first ghost podcast? Made by oh actual gosh. ghosts. Yes. From okay. the other side. I'm writing this down in my notes. <laughs> yeah. No, for real. Okay. Stay tuned, guys. Yeah, stay tuned. So the next one I have is that you should not... Okay, okay. Actually, let me ask you a question. What is the number... There, there's a certain number of people that you should not sit at your dinner table. Like that it's oh, unlucky to have okay. this amount of people. Okay. I definitely should know this. Have definitely heard this before. And I just feel like what I'm about to say is not right. But I'm just going to go ahead and say seven. No, it is 13. Okay, well, I thought it was 13, but that just was too obvious. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I See, I didn't see anything about seven people at your table. That is also sort of an unlucky number, Yeah, you know? Mm-hmm. But 13, definitely. Most people definitely. People say it's an unlucky number all the time. So that's that's a big part of it that it's just unlucky. Mm-hmm. Um, and the reason you wouldn't want to sit thirteen people at your table is that it means that one person will die within a year of having the meal. Oh my! One goodness. one of the people sitting oh my there. God, that's horrible. And this actually ties back to the Bible. What? Okay, I that's interesting. Yeah. Are we talking about the, the dinner? The Last Supper. The Last Supper. Yeah. Why could I not think of the what dinner. that was called? The dinner. <laughs> yes. The Last Supper. Uh, yeah. Because there were 13 people at that mm-hmm. at that dinner. Yeah. Um, and one fell. Yes. So Jesus and his 12 apostles. Um, this and then, you know, the next day, right? Um, yes. He was betrayed. Judas. And... Somebody died. called Judas by Lady Gaga. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and because of this connection back to the Bible, uh, people say that it will be the youngest person at the table oh. who will die. Oh, because Jesus was the youngest at the Last Supper. Oh, interesting. You know, I don't even know if I knew that. You know, I don't know if I did either. I don't wow. really know. <laughs> I don't know the details of the Bible. So <laughs> Yeah, same. But wow. Um. Yeah, so I guess he was the youngest, so if you have 13 people sat at your dinner table, the youngest one will die within the year. Yikes. So. I mean, as long as you make sure somebody is younger than you, I think you're good. I mean, somebody <laughs> well, won't that, be. But... but also, like, maybe just invite one more person or something. True, but I'm imagining, like, you invite 20 people and then only 13 show up. Then what do you do? <gasps> oh. Kick somebody out? That's mean. What if you just have two tables? I mean, is that how it works? I mean, this says don't seat 13 people at the table, so you can have multiple tables. Okay, well, okay, good. Glad we found a little way through that one. Yeah, I think I think that's a good way around it. Yeah. Because, like, yeah, like a gathering of 13 people, that's probably fine. It's just... Yeah, probably. <laughs> don't, don't all sit at the I same mean, I guess table. we could try. Try it. <laughs> yeah. Do we know 13 people? <laughs> um, definitely. <laughs> Yeah, um, anyways. So, the last one that I have here is a wedding tradition. Oh, okay. I have a bunch of weddings coming up, so I'm excited to hear about this one. Yeah, so I'm, I'm wondering, since you've been to a few weddings, you have some coming up, if you know this tradition, if any of your friends have done this, um, it has to do with bury- burying something um, a month before the wedding. Do you know? Oh, no, absolutely not. 
Okay, so you're supposed to bury a bottle of bourbon a month before your wedding. Okay, getting lit off some ground bourbon. Yeah, honestly. So you're supposed to visit your, um, the, like the site of your wedding exactly a month before the wedding. And then bury it at the site, um, like at the site of the ceremony, like right where you're supposed to get married and bury it upside down. Um, and this will ensure that no rain, that, like that there will be no rain on your wedding day. Wow, that was not what I was expecting. <laughs> I also think that the venues might have issues with that. Yeah, actually, I saw um, this tradition on one of the venue websites. But, like, because, like, when I was looking it up, there was, like, a few venues that were mentioning it. But I'm mm -hmm. like, I don't know if they're allowing... I mean, if they're going to put it on their website, they got to allow it. Right. Right. <laughs> right. I would say so. But then and again, I'm thinking of like, what if your wedding is indoors? Like you can't necessarily dig a yeah. hole under a building. There's that too. See, cause I've only, I've, I mean, I've been to a lot of weddings that were outside, so I didn't even really consider the inside True. ones. Also, <laughs> I wasn't even thinking, cause like, I guess it wouldn't matter if you were inside, if it's raining or not. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. So that yeah, makes sense. We're, see, we're smart. We both. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even think of that either. <laughs> okay. So, so yeah, basically you'll get the best possible weather if you do this, supposedly. Um, and there are a few other rules that the bottle can't be opened. So it has to be full when you bury it. And you should also like splurge on a, like a, an expensive bottle. You can't just get oh, the cheap one. Okay. Yeah. And then on your wedding day, you dig it up and drink some, <laughs> you know? That part, I really, I like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, I like no the whole one, thing. No one really knows the origins of this one, but it's just something that people do. Wow. Okay. I thought, I really thought you were going to tell me some exquisite story of like how it worked <laughs> or something, like it would feed the earth or something. And you're like, no, just for fun. No. Yeah. Honestly, it just kind of is just for fun, but that's okay. Um... Sometimes superstitions, that's just, they just come out of nowhere and you got to sure. just go with it because sometimes they work. Exactly. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> we need to try this one or like maybe I'll tell my friends who are getting married soon, you know? Yeah. If, if anybody has a month to go or yeah, like they more do. than a month to go, you have to do it exactly a month before. So. Yeah. I just feel like the venues are not going to be happy with them <laughs> if yeah. they do that. But you know, well, we'll see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, so that's the last superstition I had. Um, yeah, I honestly, I'm not really that big of a superstitious person, but I might get a bottle tree just because they seem pretty, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, they're cute and they catch ghosts. I would say less, honestly, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I really like those. I love that. I wonder, I want to do, a, like, a part two of Southern, because there's a lot down here in the South. Let me I tell know. you that. I know, Southern people, superstitious, <laughs> very big much. Big, superstitious, very much yes. So. Big, big. Yeah, I, you know what's crazy is ever since I talked about the original superstitions, I've just noticed how many times I'm like, knock on wood or like throw salt over your shoulder. I do that all the time. Oh, true. I didn't even really think of the ones that I kind of use. Yeah. I, I mean, those probably are the only, I don't know. Well, yeah, now that I can think like, of, like, at the top of my head, but... We need to, like, go about our day and, like... Just write them down. Yeah. Yeah, we, we should. <laughs> a a we're... superstition log. Yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. I love that. Well, that was very... That was a fun little story, Savannah. Um, Thanks. I suppose, moving along to mine this week, I think you're going to be pretty excited about this one. Um, I have, for you guys, The Mystery of the Lost Colony of Roanoke. Oh, dun, dun, dun. Yes. I've, I've heard about this one before. Yes, indeed. So today's story comes to you from right here in North Carolina. Fun. Um, <clears throat> so I am covering the mystery, as I said, of the lost colony of Roanoke. And it's been a really big mystery for a long time. But it's possible that we might have a maybe potential possible explanation at the end. <gasps> what? Possibly. They've mm. had a breakthrough? Mm. Somewhat. Oh, Somewhat. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> yes. It's maybe, maybe not. It's really, it's so unsure. But okay. We'll get there. 
Um, the Roanoke Colony was actually made by this guy named Sir Walter Raleigh. Raleigh, shout out. Um, in 1585, which super long time ago. Mm-hmm. And so Sir Walter Raleigh, he was trying to become the first permanent English settler in Northern America. Oh. At the time. Did he succeed? Um, you know what? I'm not actually sure. I mean, he did make it over, but I don't know if he was the very first. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. I don't know. But as I mentioned, it was founded in 1585, the Roanoke Colony. And so he did make it that same year that he wanted to. Um, but um, the colonists actually ended up disappearing under completely unknown circumstances um, when a ship visited the colony only five years later. So they were only there for five years before the whole colony disappeared. Oh, wow. Which is crazy. So, yeah, they disappeared in 1590, which is crazy. I did not realize it was that long ago. So, hmm. yes. So, so <coughs> Sir Walter Raleigh, though, did he make Raleigh? Yeah, yeah, he did. After this yep. colony was disappeared? He did, indeed. Indeed. It was named hmm. after him, which is crazy. Well, okay. So he was still alive after it was okay. Okay, yeah. I so, think I think we're getting ahead of ourselves. I'm yes, sorry. Yes. But. <laughs> yes, yes. But yes, he what he did. He was the only one that made it out. So. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I, I feel it's like okay. I spoiled that. No, it's okay. it's okay. No, you didn't. <laughs> Not at all. Um, okay. But before that, just backing it up a little bit, Roanoke Island is located in the Outer Banks of North Carolina. Today, it's in Dare County. And I actually have been there to Roanoke Island. Um, it's today, it's Hatteras Island. So, fun. Mm. And they do have a um, Roanoke Museum, but I have not been there. But I do plan on going the next time I go. So, anyways, starting the story at the very beginning, in August of 1587, a group of 115 English settlers arrived in North Carolina. What is today? Which is so crazy. I feel like, because I also yeah. always kind of thought when I was growing up that the Roanoke colony was from Roanoke, Virginia. Mm. And I don't know. I mean, I guess it makes sense. But because I didn't, because I was like, there's no Roanoke in North Carolina, but just well, not, not anymore. anymore. You know? <laughs> Do you think the Roanoke, Virginia was named after this one? Uh, yeah, I think it's probably like the same people just like migrated up a little bit. Oh. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So... Because I feel like the land, like, on Hatteras is not great for surviving. <laughs> it's like a literal island in the middle yeah. of the ocean. Yeah. So, <laughs> that's, I mean, I don't actually know if that's 100% true, but that's my assumption. That they just migrated up a little bit. Because Roanoke's not that far. Yeah. From yeah. there. But, anyways. They, um, so the 115 settlers got there in 1587. But they had actually all been there once before. Two years prior to them moving, that's when they first found the place. And they were like, oh, this looks like a great place to move to. Let's go. <laughs> and then two years later, they made it happen. Okay. So they, they went there, scoped it out, and mm-hmm. then went back. Mm-hmm. And they got their stuff and <laughs> yep. came out. Okay. Yep. They made a few plans. They were like, bye, guys. We're going. <laughs> Gone forever, I guess. <laughs> later. Got it. Um, so later that year, um, the governor of the new colony and his name was John White, he sailed back to England in order to gather a fresh load of supplies. So John White, this guy, important to know. It's the most basic name I've ever heard. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> ever. It sounds so fake, but... John White. Okay. Back in the day, you know, he, he was probably the only John White. Not... I mean... Not his... Yeah. Prob- probably his dad, his grandpa, his uncle, everybody was probably named John White. <laughs> but... This guy's important. So he was like the governor, the leader of this new colony. So what actually happened was Sir Walter Raleigh, he did not actually like stay with these people. He just kind of planned it all out and then let them go. So then he made John White in charge of these people. Okay. 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 So, you know, they were living there in North Carolina, thriving, doing whatever, and they needed some more supplies. So John White was like, it's okay. I will sail the ship back to England and I'll gather some pli- some supplies and bring them back. So he did that, went by himself. Um, however, as the second he got back to England, this huge naval war broke out between England and Spain. 
and Queen Elizabeth I called on every ship available to confront this big Spanish army. So John White obviously had to, and he went to assist England in the war. <laughs> okay. Wow. I mean, he had to, right? Like, that's his I mean, queen. Yeah, yeah, he <laughs> had suppose. to. He was like, forget about all those people I left in America. <laughs> yeah, like, did he get word, I guess, did he get word back to them? Like, no, uh, sure did not. Oh, so he just left them, mm-hmm. abandoned them. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. So in August of 1590, nearly three years later. Okay. Three years. I repeat. Three years. Okay. Okay. Later, three years. That's a long John time. John sailed back to Roanoke. <laughs> where okay. He had left. He had left his wife and his daughter and his infant granddaughter. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. So now, fun fact: his infant granddaughter that he left there on that island was Virginia Dare, who was the first English child to be born in America. What? Mm hmm. And oh, wow. that's where the name Virginia, the state, came to as well because of her, and stuff. So crazy. Um, huh. That's awesome. I didn't even know that. I know. In it was crazy. Carolina. So crazy. Um, so, but also, okay, you keep saying three years is like you're emphasizing it like it's a long time. And it is a long time. It is. How long does a ship, like how long does it take a ship to get from the UK to like North Carolina? That's a like, good point. Back ships, in the 1500s. Like, yeah, like they're slow, like travel slow. But I can tell you it does not take three years. Well, definitely not. Yeah. <laughs> like I would say probably a couple months. Yeah. Yeah, so they were probably expecting him back, what, in, like, a year? I would say, like, a year, max. And then, you know, of course he was in war, but, like, three, I feel like is a lot. Yeah, they were probably like, he's never coming back Yeah, they were like, he's gone. 100%. Yeah. I would think the same thing. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, so, when he got back, those three years later, his family, as well as the other 110 settlers that he brought with him were nowhere to be found at all he looked around everywhere went as hard as he could found hardly any trace of the colony or any people at all <laughs> like nothing okay so he abandoned them yep. and then they abandoned they him said, so. <laughs> um the only thing that he could find really was there was like two little clues that he found okay one of them was the word croatoan carved into a wood post where the town was set up at one point. And then he also found the letters C-R-O carved into a tree on the colony's border. Okay. And so these creepy. two signs were the only evidence left behind. Which is crazy. Oh. <laughs> but then again, it was three years. So, you know, who knows how long they were gone up until that point. I mean, that is very true. Like what they could have they... left day one of him leaving. Yeah. yeah. Or they could have left a day before that, you know. Who knows. Um, so yeah, many investigations into the fate of the lost colony have occurred over the centuries and centuries that have passed since then, but no official 100% solid answer has ever been found. There are many theories as to what happened to them, so we will get into that right now. So the first hypothesis is that possibly they decided that they needed to sail back to England themselves to get the things that they needed. And possibly they got lost at sea or maybe the Spaniards who were in the war with England, maybe they were like, you know, maybe the colony had gotten almost to England and then the Spaniards actually got their ship and killed them due to the war that was going on. And so before doing any of this research, I actually never heard of that theory, but I think that's a pretty valid one, honestly. Yeah, I mean, well, minus so you're the saying... minus the evidence of the tree, like the croatoan on the tree, like right, you know, yeah. they needed supplies. That's why John White left to begin with, right. and so maybe after I don't know a year or two, maybe even they were like, okay, he's not coming back, but we still need these supplies, and we can't get them anywhere but England. So let's just go there ourselves. And so maybe they okay. either got lost at sea or the Spaniards got to them first and killed them. That is a solid point. Mm-hmm. But would the whole colony go? Well, see, that's where the fault lies. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> Probably not, because like, why would they just, all go? Yeah, yeah. But also, just some like, of them, right? Yeah, 
I would say probably just some of them, but they were mostly families and stuff. So maybe that, like nobody wanted to leave anybody behind. Who yeah, knows? I can see that too. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. But yeah, those were theories that I had never really heard of before. But I was like, I mean, it, it could make sense. <laughs> that doesn't help to add to the mystery because I just want to solve this. But, you know, it's possible. Um, but the more common theories are having to do with an island um, just south of the Roanoke Colony. Um, and it was home to a Native American tribe that were called the Croatoans. So, <laughs> and let's remember okay. what well. they carved onto the tree. The word Croatoans. So, you know, maybe that has something to do with it. Considering that the island was just south of where they were. You know. Right, yeah. So there are two theories that come from this Roanoke Island. The first is that the settlers, maybe before attempting to, you know, go back to England, maybe they were like, hey, there's some people right south of us. Let's go see if they can give us some food or supplies, you know. And so the theory goes that maybe they went and tried to get some supplies and stuff and they were met with a harsh fate and that possibly the Croatoan people killed them for trying to overstep their welcome. If there was ever even a welcome to begin with, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So I feel like that's a strong possibility. You have to remember these people just came over and they were like, yeah, this is our home now. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. you know, if somebody did that to my home, I'd be pretty mad too. So I think them being killed by the people is a possibility. But then you have to think like if they were all killed by them, how did somebody write Croton on the tree? See, yeah, that's what I was going to say too. Like did the did the Croton tribe like did they come to their yeah. land and they're like this is and ours. carve on the tree. They're like it's a possibility. <laughs> or like what if one of them somehow escaped the Croton people and then wrote Croton to be like that's who killed us and then they escaped. I don't know the answer. The possibilities are endless. I feel like any of these things could have happened, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -mm. I don't know. It's hard. But the second theory with this island is that it's possible that when the tribe, um, you know, were met with these people coming up and they're like, we need supplies, that they, you know, just kind of took them in under their wing and their tribe and the settlers kind of merged together and became one big happy family. So this is the theory that I like to go with because that's what I hope happened to these people, you know? I hope everybody got along, but I just don't know if that's the reality of it, you know? Yeah. But I do think that it's strange that John's John White's family, like, wouldn't reach back out to him. You know, I mean, maybe I don't know anything about John White other than what I've said, but like maybe he was a bad guy. He did, in fact, leave them <laughs> there for years. Yeah, well, maybe they didn't know that he was still alive. That's true. I mean, that's true, too. Like he could have been dead. I mean, he was in a war, too. Like he definitely could have easily been dead. Mm -hmm. Um, But I don't know. I don't know. It's very hard. Um Regardless, Maybe though. in those three years, uh, his wife found somebody. Yeah, somebody in else. In the Croatoan. That's true. Yeah. That's very possible. But regardless of what you want to believe, I think that no matter what theory you want to go with, I think it definitely has something to do with the Croatoan people. Because obviously, like, why would they write that on the tree if it wasn't? And also they wrote it twice. Though they wrote Croatoan the first time and then C-R-O, which seems as if they were trying to write Croatoan again and maybe ran out of time. I don't know. So that's yeah, see, also that something one, to think about. Yeah, that one really gets me because it's like, why did you not finish it? Like, did they not have enough room on the tree or like, or right? What? Or like, or did, were they writing it on that tree first? And they were like, actually, this isn't a good spot for it. Let's put it somewhere else. Right. It's not actually creepy. It's just, they just needed to move to a different <laughs> right. area. Right. Which is, I mean, that's all possible too. Yeah, yeah. it is. Ugh, which that doesn't make anything easier, you know? I know. For, like, for like entertainment purposes, like, for the creepy movies and stuff, we want to go with, like, the creepiest vibe, of like, course. the creepiest one. Yeah. But, like, in real life, it could just be the most, like... Like, easy sim thing. The simplest answer, yeah. yeah. Like, the sun was too hot bearing down while they were trying to carve it into the tree. They're like, we're you know? not... We're, we already did it once. It's fine. Yeah, like, mm, they'll it. get it. They'll understand. <laughs> or, or two people were doing it at the same time. And trying to race each other. That see? 
that would be me and one person yeah one <laughs> finished. person finished first and then they were like we're okay i'm done you know listen i think that's definitely gonna happen <laughs> i actually might change my whole thought process actually that's what happened yeah i mean it could have <laughs> <They were> <laughs> that's funny um okay so another there's just one other piece of evidence pointing to the theory that the settlers joined the Croatoan people is apparently there are these little stones that have been found, okay? Allegedly, they are made, these little stones, by Eleanor Dare, who was John White's daughter. Um, These stones are called Dare Stones, and allegedly they contain written stories that tell the fate of the colonists and also personal letters to John. But these dare stones are largely believed to be a hoax and forgery because don't you think that would have been way too obvious? Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Like when I even read that, I was like a dare stone. Like I've never even heard of a dare stone. So I don't even think I can believe that. But I needed to mention it just in case somebody else has heard of a dare stone, you know. Okay. Yeah, I haven't heard of that one before. Me neither. But apparently all everybody who's ever researched it is like, that's completely a hoax. So yeah yeah don't think they're believable unfortunately because that would be way easy but um okay so let's see here i lost my little spot okay so we're moving forward in time a lot right now um but keep up so in 2007 okay oh okay we're jumping forward to 2007 (laughs) we're in 1590 now we're in 2007 okay um Efforts began to collect and analyze the DNA of local families to see if any of them in the local area were related to either the Roanoke settlers, the local Native American tribes, or both. Because if they're both, then that would answer the question, too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. But unfortunately, despite all the hard work, nothing from that search has ever been found, really. Um, So far, nobody's been a match, so that... Is interesting. So moving forward again to 2012, um, researchers actually did uncover a new lead to the mystery. Oh, a big okay. lead. Okay. Okay. So they were examining a map at the British Museum in London, and this map was actually a map that was created by John White. He actually uh-huh. painted it. Um, so he painted the map. It was the Elizabethan era. United States. Okay. Like before the United States were the United States. Right. He right. drew what he thought was the map of it and he titled it La Virginia Pars. And I, that was like the most American way of saying that, but I don't know what that means. So. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know either. <laughs> yeah. And I also didn't look it up. So should have probably done that. But anyway, um, the researchers found, and I have to make this as bold as possible, in invisible ink. On the map. <laughs> what? Mm-hmm. Invisible ink? Invisible ink. Okay. They found outlines of two forts, and one of the forts was actually less than 50 miles west of Roanoke. So, this kind of, this update from 2012 kind of takes away everything I've said up to this point, because maybe John White did actually know where they were the whole time, and just didn't you say know, anything. he probably did. He probably did. The way that we thought that he didn't is crazy because he might have. And this kind of proves it. Low so key. are we saying that he, they were in these forts? So. But um, like, was the war, the war was over no. when he went back or oh, it wasn't? Um, You know, actually, I did not look that up. But it was definitely less bad because he was able to go back. Okay. But I actually don't know when that war ended. But... Right. I think it was still going on. I think it went on for many, many years. Um, so the researchers say, because my first question was, what, what, how, first of all, what is invisible ink? And how is he writing in it? But apparently it, it was a thing back then. And the researchers say that the, the reason that he used the invisible ink was more than likely to hide their whereabouts in case the Spanish got a hold of the map. Who was... It, you know who they were fighting mm-hmm. in the war mm-hmm. yeah so that's that, kind of what i thought immediately yeah it's that, just I mean, like that well, wasn't what to I was make thinking, sure but it does make sense but also like invisible ink like i guess there's ways to make it i don't even want to think about it yeah. just... <laughs> i have 
Literally no idea. I'm okay. assuming instead of like invisible, I have to assume it's like disappearing ink made from like well, some sort of something. Yeah, yeah. Not like the invisible ink we can buy from Five Below today, obviously. Oh, yeah, like definitely something different, but. Yeah, but that's crazy. Yeah. We should look up the um the recipe, see if they have it online so we can share some secrets with some invisible ink. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so. The researchers obviously then set out to explore where where this fort was on the map. And they set out to do this in 2015. And they were able to find two dozen shards of English pottery while they were, like, digging up the ground and stuff to see if they could find bones or really anything. Um, and they have named that site Site X. And they have used ground-penetrating radar. And it revealed another possible dig site only two miles away from that one. So, obviously, they, at that point, realized this is bigger than we thought. We need to go back and get some more funding for this because we are out of money. So, they went back, raised money, started back up in 2019 in December. That is so recent. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. Very. Okay. They were able to find more fragments of ceramics. And all of these ceramic pieces that they found seem to be coming from different parts of Europe. Um... And they also seem to have been used for food preparation and storage. And they were dated back to the 1500s. So, interesting. And they said that it, that also suggests that it was long-term residents living there instead of just being there for a short time. Um, so, taking this information, <laughs> those researchers seem to be a good 85% sure that those remains are from the Roanoke colony. That they actually did join the tribe. And then that tribe moved 50 miles around-ish, like, west, you know, more inland from the ocean. Um, you know, there were arguments that those remains from, like, the potteries and stuff could have belonged to the settlers from, that ended up coming later, you know, down mm -hmm. the line. Okay. Because, you know, there, once that group of colonists came, way more came pretty soon after you know they were just like the first group so some people argue like it's hard to know if this was actually from the missing colony or if it were just other people coming then you know it's hard to date like to a specific year because they weren't just like 2023 like written on the bottom of the vases you know right like right. we do today so you that's know. okay but like they pretty much figured it out well right like or no uh, Okay, you're about to. I did in fact tell you it's still a mystery here. today, um, but those researchers are very confident. They do believe that those remains prove the link from the Roanoke colonies to, you know, the um, what are they called? The Croton people, and uh -huh. that they just joined the tribe and then tribe and then moved west. And they believe that that was kind of the plan all along. That John White planned that with them, like when he left. And that he did probably see his family again, which was proven by the map. So that's their whole theory, right? However, dun, 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 in the saddest way possible. Um, some people do not agree with this interpretation. Archaeologists from ECU, which is East Carolina University in North Carolina, they are actively, to this day, working on disproving that theory in a very scientific <laughs> oh. way. Oh. Mm-hmm. So, those archaeologists from ECU actually say that the remains that were found, the, you know, pots and pans and stuff, they were found in Birdie County, North Carolina. And the scientists at ECU say that during that time period, Birdie County was the heart of enemy territory. So that there's no possible way that those people could have survived there in that county due to the meat, like, the people who were living there at the time. Um, just because they were, like, not... They were not allowing people to be there. So they're like, um, you know, I don't think they would have made it. That's probably coming from the people who later came from the same place, just le at a later time. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the ECU researchers fully believed that they, the colony did join the Croatoan people, but that they had just re relocated to somewhere else. Like that this specific place is not the one. Okay, so they are partially, like, following their story, but yeah. they're just saying that this is not what proves that. Yeah, and they're like, 
we don't know what John White's map has to do with this and like why he, you know, outlined those forts. And yeah. like it's possible that he was just outlining the forts where people were going to go in the future, you know? Yeah. He didn't yeah. necessarily have to be saying that about the missing colony. You know, his life didn't just end when they went missing. He kept surviving and he was a leader. So who knows? Who knows? To this day, there is no definitive answer, but the archaeologists at ECU and many other scientists are still working to uncover this mystery, obviously. People really want to know what happened. I kind of think it's pretty obvious. They wrote Croatone on the tree. I think that they tried to join these people, and either they did or they got killed. <laughs> you know, I kind of feel like that's the only two possibilities that happened. Yeah. But yeah, I honestly, do... Yeah. Oh, go ahead. I'm just imagining these people like they they just came over, you know, fresh off the boat from another country that was more way developed, you know, and this doesn't have anything what they're what they're used to at yeah, all, right? Definitely. And they have to um and and it's different wildlife and different different everything stuff. Yeah. So they probably don't know how to survive here. So, and then their leader leaves. <laughs> Literally. And then they find this tribe who, this group of people who's like willing to help them. So I feel like that's what happened. But yeah. I don't know. Definitely. The only part of me that feels like it's weird is that like the DNA search that was going on around 2010 didn't show anybody sharing DNA to these people. Huh. Okay. So that, I mean, it's possible they all just moved, you know, like Hatters is yeah. not a big place. Yeah. So it's possible the people, the locals are not the people who were descendants from the 1500s. I think that's not, you know, that big of a stretch, really, to say okay, that. Okay, so, because they, tra- they track the ancestry of the people who still live in that area. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. But just yeah. like that was the 2010s. So what I was going to say was I think that with all of the ancestry DNA stuff, like, science that's coming out now just even within the past two years you know it's upgraded so heavily so I really think that we will come back with an answer one day I really do probably one day soon because like people are starting to catch serial killers from somebody like a third fourth cousin down the line doing an ancestry test you know yeah so if these people did in fact survive and did not get killed by them I think that it's possible that soon We might have DNA evidence linking them back to whatever happened. That is a long ways back. (laughs) It is a long ways back, but that's, you know, that's where the technology is heading towards. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we could cross our fingers and really hope because I need to know the answer. I know. I really I want to know what happened too. because, you know, what everybody wants to have happened is that they like got destroyed by, (laughs) you know, that's not what by I want. By this tribe. But that's what, like, people want for, like, the shock value of it. Oh, for sure. For sure. It would make the movies better. But, yeah. But. Like, the creepiness and, like, the way, like, oh, my God, like, it's carved on the tree. It's so creepy. Mm-hmm. But it's, like, I feel like that's just them showing where where they went, you know? Yeah. I do, too. I really do, too. But if you do want a really dramatized scary version of this story you can definitely watch season five or six whatever of american horror story which is called american horror story roanoke (laughs) which is fully about like the scary part of the story yes and like the scary like means of what it could be possibly but yeah that is the mystery of the lost colony of roanoke and i'm sorry that i don't have any answers i wish i did yeah, I mean, it wouldn't be a mystery. Well, it still would be a mystery, just a solved mystery. <laughs> but yeah, I really think, I really, really think we will fully know soon. I really do. Because they're still working so hard and they're just now finding out these things. Like 2019, that's so recent. You know, I have not yeah. lost all hope yet. That's what I have to say. So, okay, yeah. 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 So let us know. Well, I'll make a poll about what happened but let us know your thoughts about what happened to these people because i want to know but go check out our instagram we post pictures every week from our stories and they'll be fun i want to see some whatever what is it haint blue Uh porch that's what i want to see a picture of so go check out our instagram and also don't forget to rate and review us on spotify and apple podcast please 
But other than that, I don't really have anything else for you guys. What about you, Savannah? I think that's it. Okay, well then I guess we will see you guys next week. Cue the music. <laughs>